Well, I'm back to football again. That's a bit closer. Um, some of my stories. Hang on, I just had a little note up there. It's now vanished. So let's just get it back. Okay. Um, this will be football. Politics of a sort, because I went to a general election in Swindon. I think it was 1992, I think it was. And, um, of course, it was quite a... Um, a strange thing to do because I was public enemy number one in the town and everybody wanted to be dead. The same spot as, you know, um, dead or alive, Vincent Farrer. It was on the notice boards where my sister, where my daughter was working at the Science Research Council, the civil service. She had a bad time going through it all. And my children did, by the children, the young ones. Anyway, going back now to um, when I was, um, <clears throat> I noticed that I was put on the front page. Well, I was put on the front page, lots of things, to the truth. But in one particular time, I was put on the front page, well, I'll tell you that another time. I was put on the front page, and they were talking all about my views on politics and all about me be going in for the general election. They didn't mention the Conservative or Labour Party or Liberal Party or Green Party or Raving Looney Mad Party, just me. So I decided I'm going to go and find out why i just been picked up. So I went to a local evening advertiser, I used to be on Victoria Hill at the time, and of course no appointment, and I went to the lady, and you get these ladies at doctor surgeries, and in offices, I, I had one, I had a very nice lady called um, Betty Baston. I hope we were still around Betty, about 10, 12 years with me, so it might be. A nice lady, you were like my dragon, you good, did a good job, you kept all the hassle away from me. Oh, this is what happens. So I went to reception and said, I'd like to see the editor. I'm sorry, Mr. Editor, I can't remember your name now because it's 30 odd years ago. I said, I want to see the editor. And she said, do I have an appointment? I said, no. And she looked at me as a dragon would. She said, I've never known the editor to ever see anybody without an appointment. And I suppose I had the arrogance to say, well, you've seen me. With that, she phoned through, then looked at me and she said, He's coming down now. He came down to reception and escorted me to his office. Nice man. Got on well. Not aggressive. Very understanding. And he simply explained to me the reason why I'm getting all that publicity. He said nobody else is of interest to people. He said, your news, Mr. Farrow. People want to hear about you. They're not interested about Conservative and Labour MPs, uh, uh, candidates. He said, it's you. Anyway... I've got to talk to him like I did with the mayor about certain things, about the police, because I knew about certain things. Sadly, I've got to learn all sorts of weird things when you're, when you're in that position in life. And there were some wrongdoings taking place, which I'll come to another time when it cropped up somewhere else. He found that interesting, and that turned up later on. So that's my my episode about I've got no chance of seeing the editor um, oh there's another time for some reason if you've ever seen uh, Scarface or the Godfather movies you'll see things like this for some, I can't tell the detail but for some reason I had to meet Lumicari and Brian Hillier in an abattoir it wasn't working at the time it was all empty just me with all these dead carcasses around us I think it's quite funny. Didn't find it intimidating. I thought it was just funny. And another time, um, I was going to meet. I'm not sure if losing the car it was just me and Brian Hillier, but we picked up a reporter. And sorry, I know I should remember your name, but it's a long time ago. I met you a few times. I saw you at Brian Hillier's funeral, and I hadn't seen you since this time I'm talking about now. But. Um, I know you were frightened at the time. I tried my best to make you not frightened. We had this reporter from the evening advertiser and we were going to um, meet either Lou or Lou was with us, I can't remember. Lou's team, West Ham team, were at a very fancy, large, stately home health farm somewhere in northeast London somewhere. Anyway, on the way there, I think it was on the way there, we stopped at uh, a service station, I think on the M4, and uh, I went to go to it and this reporter went as well. While I'm in the tournament, he didn't cry, but he broke down, and he was he was basically shaking. He was really, really frightened. 
He said, I know you're going to kill me. And I thought to myself, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm the accountant. I'm a family guy. I'm an accountant. I'm not a hitman. I don't belong, belong to mafia. I know lots of people talk about the mafia and about Lou and everybody else, but everybody takes it all out of proportion completely. So I really showed him, really showed him that wasn't going to be the case. Anyway, we landed going to this stately home and um, we were having meetings with Lou and Lou was a uh, um, football player from West Ham. And on the way back, again, this man, he said, I know, he said, you're going to put me in concrete and river. And he was serious. He still thought we were going to kill him and come back home night time. Anyway, I hope you're still alive. I'll carry on another time. Bye.